one day I should have everybody just can't be too careful though those weirdos out there. <laughs> Is the Warner Brothers of the Oh, gotta ask yourself. Do I feel lucky? Marvel Legends Gauntlet. That is Nano awesome. Gauntlet. Ooh. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, wow, that's cool. That is... Let's go. All right, guys. We are here on another Friday night of Collectors Assemble Live. I got a new camera. I look crispier. Look at that. Yeah. Look at my Wolverine and Ghost Rider. I'm ready for this show. But, guys, I'm super excited. If you hear that whistling, it's my birds. They're excited that we're having a show tonight. Um, but, yeah, guys, listen. I'm super excited because, again, we have another guest coming on today. One of our favorite sculptors, again, from Sideshow. Uh Thank you so much, Sideshow, for allowing this and, you know, allowing uh, Jorge Villar on the show, especially after all these bangers that Sideshow's coming out with. I'm really, really excited to talk about some of, you know, the things that he's done for Sideshow, especially that Ghost Rider, right, that uh, broke the internet not too long ago. But, man, I'm really excited. I'm happy you guys are here. I know you guys could be anywhere else on a Friday night, but you're here with us. So thank you so much. And for those who are watching the replay, Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think of the show. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let me introduce my first guest, as always, on the panel. Mr. Kennedy. Mr. Kennedy, you, what's up, bro? How's it going? Not much, man. Still with a with a messed up voice, but I'm here. I'm excited. How you been? Uh... So you're getting better, and I think I'm starting to take the nosedive now. Oh, geez. I this think weather, it's going around, man. All yeah. this weather changing stuff. You know how it works. Yep, but I still have enough energy for tonight. I can't wait. Hey, let's go, man. Super yeah. happy that you're here. Congratulations. I know uh, Iron Studios dropped some uh, cool Ooh. stuff today, man. They dropped some heat today. I was loving it. They did. I love those insider shows at the end of the month. Uh, super good. Uh, as you guys know, I'm heading to Brazil next week. So for the next two weeks, there's not going to be two shows. We're going to be off two shows, but I will be visiting Iron Studios as well. So hopefully I get to see them in person and do some videos nice. on them um, to get you guys more excited. But yeah, man, congratulations. I'm really excited about that. And of course, X-Men 97. Let's see who else we got. We got, as always, of course, Josh McCoy in the building. What's up, dude? What's up, man? Happy to be here. Rushed here after work. It was, it was a hectic day, but happy to be there. Here. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, as always. Thank you for being on Russian Home. We got Andrew. What's, What's up, up, dude? Woo. Big congratulations to you, too, man. You had a big purchase today for your collection. What'd you get? Picked up all three uh, X Men pieces from the Iron Studios drop. Had to, had to get those X Men ninety seven ones. I'm um, uh, eyeballing the, the that last Ronan and the Raven though too, man. They they're dropping some heat today, man. They are. That Ronan looks really good too, man. It's, it'll go good with your uh, with your bust that we talked about earlier. But yep. I'm excited, man. They're coming out with some nice stuff. So like I said, hopefully I'll get to see that stuff in person if it's at the, at the concept store. <clears throat> So we'll see. But thank you for being on. Let's see who else we got here from Puerto Rico. Dennis Perez in the building. What's up, dude? Hey, man. Very tired from work, but very hectic. Very good for this show. Prepare. Let's go. Yeah, we got a good guest today. Another from Argentina. Stand up, man. Argentina is doing big things, man. I got I to gotta go visit, man. Love it. It's in the water. A hundred percent. It's in the water. hundred <laughs> percent. I need to be drinking that. So, uh, man, we got Sean Carlson in the building. What's up, brother? What's going on, guys? Yeah, I need a little, uh, I don't know if they can ship up, you know, a nice case of that Argentinian H2O up here. You know, <laughs> we, we, we could all use a nice shot of it. Yeah, because uh, a lot of a lot of big things, a lot of big artists coming from that uh, that country right now. And lo looking forward to who we've got on today. Yeah, man. Super excited. Uh, Thank you for being on. Always, and one more time, guys, made it on time. Man, I, I love this variant of uh, P-Rock. Look at that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. No. Hey, what, up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up? 
My man looked like a DJ back there. Look. On time. Yeah, oh, really. Shit. Go ahead, y'all. Act like he's DJing for me real quick. Here we go. What happened to your hand? Oh, I love it, dude. How's your hand? Oh, God. It's all right. It's all right. How's your hand? It's all right. It's a little painful still, yeah. Had an accident. Hey Miguel, both get a new like camera setup going on. Your angles are different. Uh, oh no, I, I got a new I, camera. I'm hosting the WO tonight, so this is the this is the angle I normally use when I when I host LWO. Oh, so right. it would have been too much work to reset everything up to move it over here and everything like that. So I just started a day from here. All right, all right. Oh, all good, all good. Salute. All right, salute, bro, salute. All right, guys. So without further ado, guys. My next guest, again, is one of my favorite sculptors, especially from Sideshow. He's been doing a lot of things with them. His name is going out there more and more and more. We're going to talk about some of the things that he's been working on, especially that ghostwriter, like I said, that broke the internet. We're going to be talking about some of the other things that he's done as well as far as statues. And we're going to get a little bit behind the scene footage of things that you've never seen before, uh, which uh, I'm excited for because I always like to see the process behind things or, you know, uh, what are the certain things that they do to get to their final finalized piece, right? So I'm super excited for that and, uh, you know, allowing him to show that. But again, I've said it before, my goal on the show when I have guests, especially if it's artists, sculptors, is to bridge that gap between them and the people at home who are buying their pieces, right? Because we all have these great pieces of art surrounding us and we all admire them. And I feel like, you know, they should get their flowers more often than not. Um, and they, they, their names are on the boxes and on the website, but I'd love to hear from them. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, our guest today, Jorge Vilar. What's up, brother? How you doing? Hi guys. How are you? Come Dude, on. I'm so excited to have you on, man. Let me, uh, let me put you on a bigger screen. It's always me first. I don't know why I do that. <laughs> I'm never going to learn. Time. You know why? <laughs> I'm never going to learn. I still can't do it. Hold on. Hold on. That's yes. <laughs> hey, there you go. Listen, man. Thank you so much for being on, Jorge. I appreciate you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, guys, for inviting me. I'm very excited to to talk uh, with you guys. Um, show all the stuff we are cooking. <laughs> yeah, so, man. Uh, thank you so much for the invitation. Oh, of course, bro. You're always welcome on, man. I'm really excited. Like I said, we're gonna talk about a lot of your artwork. But for the people who might not know you in the audience, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started in this journey with uh, you know, sculpting and sideshow. Mm -hmm. this, uh, this is a brief in introduction uh, for those who don't know me. My name is Jorge Villar. I'm 28 years old. I'm from Mendoza, Argentina. And I started in the 3D modeling for approximately nine years ago. And I currently work as a digital sculptor for Sasha Collectibles. Nice, nice. Awesome. And I know that you've dropped some really cool stuff. So... I think we should start there, right? Because <laughs> obviously we know who you are now. We know we, you got that Argentinian blood, that water that we just talked about, right? <laughs> I mean, we had Daniel Bell on the show. There's so many artists coming from there, uh, and it's amazing. And oh, and before I forget, how was the festival, the Daniel Bell's festival? What is it? Uh, D, oh, what is man. it? Dynamite. Awesome. Dynamite. 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 Yeah. Dynamist. 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 There you go. How was it? It was amazing. There was a lot of artists. It was perfect. It was, you know, like the, the meme of uh, Homelander when yes. he described it. It was perfect. Every single detail. It was. <laughs> it was like that. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, so it was amazing. <laughs> so it's like for the next year event, I uh, I think it's going to be bigger, and I think it's going to be more awesome. That seems like impossible right now, <laughs> but it's it was amazing. I was super happy to be there, to share with the artist, to share with Danny, with his family, with his friends. Um, I think in a few days, maybe, uh, he is going to share some videos, some, some photos of the event so you right. can watch it. <laughs> Listen, I'm excited. I told him for sure next year, I'm going to try my best to make it out there. Uh, hopefully some of these guys will go with me, but... Yeah, man, I, I definitely want to go, man. I think that's super cool. Big congratulations to him and you and everybody who made it there and made that event possible. It got a lot of great feedback, got a lot of great sponsorships. I heard nothing but great things, so uh, congratulations there. Um, but, man, listen, I know everybody's excited for this, so I want to 
I want to talk about the Ghost Rider. So real quick, Sean, if you don't yeah. mind clicking on that Ghost Rider, we'll, we'll pull it up here first uh, on uh, Sideshow's website, guys. So you guys know that this came out. We talked about it when it was first revealed on the show. Everybody liked the piece. You know, uh, it's a Ghost Rider. We don't really see too much of. But then a couple weeks down the road, they hit us with a curveball. And they put this fantastic light up feature in it that broke the internet and mm -hmm. everybody went nuts. I know I went nuts. I think that was like the icing on the cake for this piece. Um, and it's not just a small LED feature. I mean, this thing is throughout the entire, uh, you know, statue itself from the base to the head to the chains. I mean, you name it. Uh, and it is super bright. Uh, and that's another thing that I like about it. Uh, but Jorge, you know, uh, talk to us about this piece. Talk to us about Ghost Rider and let us know, you know, uh, you know how this came about and what your feelings are behind it. Perfect. It was a very big piece, uh, a very big team effort, you could say. Uh, we have like Matt Mullen sculpting and design all the piece. Um, we have Daniel Bell doing the, the extra portrait. We have Bernardo Esquivel doing the paint job which is amazing. Um, mm -hmm. We have all the sideshow design and development team and engineer team doing all the, the magic with the light up feature, um, all that it brings. So it's really a, a, a team effort. Uh, I was able to, to work on the secondary and ter tertiary shapes, also the details and the textures of all the Ghost Rider. And I was able to to work on the all the primary, secondary, and tertiary forms, details, and textures of all the base. So it was really a dim control. If it is one of my favorite characters, was mm. Rider. I remember when I was I don't know maybe eight years old when I was watching Ghost Rider of Nicolas Cage in the in the cinema. Oh, and nice! I'm <laughs> <mind> blowing. <laughs> um, I remember that. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. At the moment, it was amazing. So it's really one of my favorite characters. So it's a dream come true, like all the pieces <laughs> I could say. Hmm. So let me ask you this: being that that's one of your favorite, uh, you know, characters, you watched them growing up. What type of preparation did you do to do this? Like, did you look into the comic books? Did you watch some of the, you know, animated cartoons that they had on it? I'm on, I know he popped up in like X Men or Ghost or Spider Man, uh, Fantastic Four, or the Hulk. I know he was in the Hulk. Um, I know he popped up in certain places, but did you have to go back and and reference some of the comic books and stuff? Yes, I tried to to take uh, uh, like details from all the sources. Uh, my main source, obviously, obviously, is the comic books. So I we watch um, uh, read again all the all the comics of the Ghost Rider that I could read. <laughs> but one of the my main inspiration was like the second Ghost Rider movie. I don't know if, if you remember with Nicolas Cage it was yeah. like a movie under the radar, but it gave me a lot of ideas about the fire and about the letter, the born letter. And I think I, I was trying to, to ex experiment things. Uh, and I think the final result is awesome. But uh, I, I think I explore all the mediums from the comic books to the movies um, and try to analyze the character to, to take the origin of the character, to do some Easter eggs, and most important, to tell a story in the piece. Dude, Jorge, I love it. I, I, uh, I, I think I, the, I, in the trailer, before you even saw the movie, in the trailer for the mm -hmm. second Ghost Rider, there's one shot where it's sort of like a, almost a profile three-quarter view where you see him turn and you see the leather burning and not just burning, mm -hmm. bubbling up. Bubbling uh, right yes. up. I, <laughs> I know the exact shot that you're talking about. And uh, yeah, I remember seeing that for the first time. Be like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. That, we've never <laughs> seen that before. Yeah, I know what yes. you're talking about. Yeah, you can totally see it here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was trying to concentrate all the detail in the parts that uh, are more close to the fire, like the head, that uh, of the course, hand, the the boots. Um, but I think it, it it's looks really nice and change a lot of the perspective of a clean uh, letter, for example. Yeah. 
Dude, it totally. looks great. Uh, I know, like I said, the internet kind of, you know, burst into flames, right? No pun intended. <laughs> when uh, they, <laughs> they they started with the light up feature, I think just it was the talk of every live show. It was like all over the internet. It was trending all over the place. Uh, made a huge difference. Uh, Dennis, I know you were one of the ones that were super excited. Dennis, send me the yep. video or the shot really quick through Messenger, and I was like, no way they added a light up feature. But Dennis. What did you think about this when they did add the uh, light-up feature? It blew me away. When I saw that light-up feature, that was like the icing on the cake. I mean, a lot of people were saying that it was expensive. Now I know why. And it's worth every penny. Yeah, look, look at, at that, guys. I, look man. at that. I mean, <laughs> it just again better than this. It looks so good. Um, roll in the mouth. So cool. I know. It looks so good. Uh, Anthony <laughs> Kennedy, you're another one that really fell in love with and, this when the light-up wow. feature got added. What do you, What are your thoughts now? <coughs> um, It's cool. I mean, yeah, definitely. At first, when it first came out, we all thought it was just going to be a straight statue. We were, like, debating whether the price justified the piece. Right. And once the light-up hit, forget about it. It was anarchy. Everyone was just rushing, and the whole fobo <laughs> kicked in. It was ridiculous, dude. It's so good, man. And of course, now yeah, Sideshow's no, doing it. Is it's all little, these it amazing little, little videos. Everything. If you look about, if you look at it carefully, it has a little bit of everything. Him jumping out of hell, but mm -hmm. you have a touch of the old Danny Cat, um, old Johnny Blaze motorcycle. Yeah, with a mix of both the Johnny Blaze jacket mixed in with the Danny Catch spikes all around. So you're getting like the best of both worlds. Yep. way you're looking at it. No, you're absolutely correct. Uh, a lot was, I mean, like I said, there was a lot of people just super excited about this yeah. uh, piece. I know I was getting a ton of messages. Uh, Josh, what did you think about this piece? I think it looked incredible. I was uh, really impressed by it before we knew there was a light up, but just the light up itself really put more life into the piece. And it, I don't collect comic statues, but this is one of those ones that has me tempted just because how <laughs> beautiful it looks when it's lit up. Was there ever a thought process? Did you guys consider doing the whole bike when you were making yeah. it? Oh, piece? you took my question. <laughs> or was it um, like from the get-go, your vision for the piece? Um, I, I couldn't uh, respond to that because I wasn't involved like in oh, okay. the design stage. Uh, mm. So I couldn't uh, talk about because I don't really know. <laughs> Fair enough. Gotcha, gotcha. Regardless, um, <clears throat> yeah, regardless, it looks good. I kind of like the idea that it's coming like out of the floor because it's almost <laughs> like it's yeah. coming out of hell, right? Like it's almost like like emerging from mm -hmm. you know the floor. So I kind of like the fact that it's not a full bike. I know a lot of people wanted a full bike, but you know, then it talks you know, you're talking more money and all that bigger bigger size. But I think it's just done right. makes it makes it stand out from anything else we've seen in the past. So it, it make, I think it looks cool this way. Exactly. Yep. Same. Same here. Yep. Same here. Looks as if. Yeah. P Rock, what do you think? I know he stole your question, but I know you um, like this piece too when it came out. Yeah. When I first saw it, I was like, when I, I'm be honest, when I first saw, it, I was like, oh, it looks cool. I just wish it was the whole bike. But when I saw it light up, I was like, oh man, that's pretty awesome, man. And I agree. <laughs> like I don't do comics, but this was I was tempted on this one right here, man. Just the lighter feature. I was just a little nervous. Question, like, um, so like you said, you you didn't have anything to do with the development of the actual sculpt or the figure. What about the light up? Did you have anything to do with that, or did you actually sculpt like the light up feature, or was that all from sideshow? Damn it! Now no, my question. <laughs> the, ah. <laughs> the guys of of sideshow and the production team. I think one of the guys charged of the production had an idea of putting the light inside the chain and they starting to design the light up feature uh, with that. So it is all of the production and engineer team. It was but, amazing. But Those guys are are insane. Was that before or after you already sculpted it? No, I think that they, they were talking about the, that idea um, when I was sculpting. Okay. But, uh, you know, all this stuff, all this magic uh, take, take time to do it correctly. So um, it was a, a long process to do it fine. Listen, I think you guys did a fantastic job. Um, and like for like for for who for those who might not know, so there's a whole entire team involved with this, right? So he's just kind of he's sculpting it, bringing it to life, bringing the idea to life. And while he's doing that, you got another team kind of thinking of other ideas that might 
be added to the statue or like in this case, like, you know, P-Rock asked about the LED feature being incorporated. So I'm sure they were dabbling with the idea. And then they finally was like, you know what? I think we can make it happen. And I think that's what happened. Um, but like I said, it all came together the, the way it was supposed to be. So <clears throat> go ahead. Excuse me. I didn't I didn't hear the question. I think it's Dennis. Hold on. But he froze. Dennis, you there? <laughs> yeah, he sounded like he it was, was mind blowing by by the yeah, by, by the statue. <laughs> <laughs> he probably was. No, I think he froze. But um, let's see. If it he was comes a back. lot of of um, of thinking in terms of the fire. I think it, it was like a whole month. I was sculpting the fire, um, and I was trying to, to create a new take on the fire, uh, something that it was not seen before. So I was studying a lot of comics and I found some comics when they create this effect to do it like the, the one of the wheels uh, spinning. Um, I was mm. trying to replicate and study a lot of how to replicate that effect in 3D. Nice. And I think we create some very nice stuff and it combined with some of the, the concrete being melted some of the parts are more like uh, round because mm -hmm. that is like the, the concrete being melted of of the hell fire um some of the fire too creates some of of shapes more detail and some some shapes be more abstract um because it's like a, a motion is uh yeah. like a piece in, in motion because yeah we want to, to create that that action in a static piece so it's it's very difficult and, and we're trying to do it in the best way best way possible yeah and i think as like I, I, you know when we're when i'm reviewing statues one of my favorite things is seeing motion in a stationary object right or telling that story and i think this statue has both of those things and like you said you incorporated that motion in the wheel um and just like everything came out really good um Let's hopefully Dennis will jump back on if he had a little bit of internet problems. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into the chat, say hi to people, and then uh Jorge is gonna show us some behind the scenes footage of you know this ghost rider, which I'm super excited about. So while he prepares that, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this from the screen for now and let's get to the chats real quick. We got AJ in the building. What's up, AJ? Thank you for being on, being the first one. Look at that. <laughs> Extra crispy tonight for sure. Yes, Ooh. sir. He's always there, uh, AJ. Oh, I love AJ, dude. He's one of the Good best. Man. Look at this fire panel tonight. He's doing all these Ghost Rider puns. Make sure to drop a like and support this fantastic show. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. We got Fine Tip Creative Studio in the building. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kennedy, doing double work. We got um, Willie Coper. Is that what that is? Nice. Grande Jorge. Got some Argentina love there. Uh oh, Thanks, Collector Joey, come on, man! You didn't have to do this. We got a super chat from Collector Joey hey. for all the hard work. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. You didn't have to, uh, guys. If you haven't checked out his show, uh, or his YouTube channel, go check it out. He is the best. Uh, he does come on to the show as well. Um, AJ saying, "Man, this was tempting. Looks amazing. I don't know if I have room anymore for statues, though. Unfortunately, I think it's everybody's problem collecting, man." It's always uh, it's a space problem. A space yeah. problem. Uh, I don't know how to say your name. Ma Matt. We're going to call you Matt. Matute. Matute. Matute, Matute. Matute Barreto. <laughs> What's up, bro? Thank you so much. Saying hi to George. We got some fans Bar here. Yo, Matute. <laughs> we got Lucas here. Another fan here for uh, Jorge. Man, you brought everybody out. <laughs> Santiago <laughs> Ramirez. <laughs> Man, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Santiago Ramirez. I'm going to feel like a Spanish announcer. <laughs> Matias <laughs> Diaz. Anancio pagado por Budweiser. La reina de cerveza. That was really good. I know, dude. You're lucky my <laughs> voice is cracked. Because if not, I would have I sounded like Don Francisco. You've rehearsed that before. <laughs> so <There amazing>. you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Jonah Barr. Uh, tremendo trabajo. Jorge saying great job with all his work. Leonardo Hernandez. Uh, in the building, Franco. Oh my God, my guy, another one of our favorites. It's fucking late here, and I am a little drunk. 
but I just wanted to say Ayora is a freaking awesome, not only a sculptor, but as a Chilean dude as well. We love Franco. Franco's been on our show a couple times, actually. Uh, great friend of the show. Another great uh, sculptor as well. Uh, giving you flowers, Jorge. <laughs> yeah, you know that, you, do you know that crazy, man? I, I I know, like, almost almost all the guys in the chat so i really <laughs> appreciate all the all the support <laughs> that's awesome dude awesome we got aurelis in the building my phone's blowing up hold on let me make sure it's not dennis um, we lost somebody else? i think we, we lost, lost somebody yeah now oh. yeah we lost uh yeah <laughs> oh no man down man down so, oh we so lost we somebody else. this is starting to turn into a slasher flick i know right? i know right <laughs> <laughs> one by one dropping off <laughs> It's the hellfire. <laughs> Thanks, wow. yeah, not, thankfully, I'm not the only minority, so hopefully it's, it's, I got to get a chance. With the lead pipe. Yeah, I was going to say, it's the guys that can't roll their R's that are next, right? Like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't say that. Oh, Josh lost power. I'm just... <laughs> I just get my wife. Okay. My wife turn, Andrew. I, I give her so much trouble because she can't do that, and I'm just like, and she's like, I dead, 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 dead. <laughs> dead, dead, dead. <laughs> hey, so both, yo, crazy story. Well, I guess it's not that crazy. So both Josh and Dennis both lost power right now. So we'll no, see what happens. Is, I mean, I'm not Rico? sure. Yeah. It's, it's a hellfire. No, for sure. Josh is yeah. not Puerto Rico. <laughs> but there no, is Josh a bad is storm out here in, in Florida. Like he's in Central mm. Florida, like I am, and. Um, the bad storm oh. just past me is probably now hitting him. When so is there not a bad happened. storm in Florida? I know, yeah, right? Yeah, well, really. fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. We got uh, Figure Kong in the building. Yes, I made it perfect time. I freaking love this piece. I'm getting it, by the way. Hey, guys, how's it going? So Figure Kong is actually getting the Ghost Rider. Yeah. We got Alan Kiefer. What's up, man? Thank you for being on. Appreciate you. Hugo is in the building. Insane work. The Ghost Rider is beautiful. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is. Mr. Kennedy doing double duty. Uh man, we got Lucas in here. Uh, we got everybody in here, man. Enzo, we got Martin Sanchez. <laughs> oh, here we go. He's got a good. Or he thought was it difficult to sculpt the fire effect? That's a good uh, question. It wasn't difficult, but it took a lot of time. Like I was telling you uh, a few minutes ago, it took me just a month, a complete month sculpt the all the fire in all wow. this um we try a lot of stuff um mm. to to achieve the best effect possible um we like i was explaining trying to combine all the stuff like a, a molten the concrete fire smoke and all that in one piece so it took a, a lot of time which would nice. you say is uh it seems to me that the the two hardest elements to to sculpt or paint it's got to be between fire and wind yes right. you, earth, earth and water can both be static you can see mm -hmm. them you know being still but uh fire especially and then which, which would you think is harder fire or wind because they're always they, it's hard <laughs> to sculpt something still yes. that's always in motion uh, i sculpt a lot of fire so I think I will say win. <laughs> okay. Win is, is definitely more more difficult because it's something like blurry. Yeah. Uh, if you post like a video of, of a fire, you see some shapes. You right. you you starting to see some patterns, um, even some volumes. But with the uh, wind or, or sun or stuff like that, it's yeah. like very blurry. It's like a, a uh, something not tangible is yeah. super difficult but uh yes i will say win <laughs> very cool thank you figure kong yeah definitely agreed <clears throat> so real quick Jorge, you got some stuff to show us right yes you want to pull that up spicy stuff <laughs> uh, okay we are going Ooh, to see spicy. some new awesome stuff from you soon uh, and what character would you love to work on Ooh. Mm. Good yes, question. I think very soon we are going to see a lot of statues, uh, a lot of collaboration and statues uh, of my own. Uh, and what character I would like to work on? I'm a very big fan of Hulk. Uh, I drew when I was a, a little kid. I I like to draw a lot. I drew for many years. Um, always like drawing hulks <laughs> so uh, i think i drew like 
a thousand hooks. Wow. <laughs> it's one of my favorite characters, so uh, I hope one day I've been able to sculpt it. Hell yeah, that that's a good uh, it's a good character, man. I hope you do too. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing your version of that character if it does come to fruition. Uh, so what are you gonna show us today? Uh, I'm excited about this because I know it's some behind the scenes stuff. Wow, look at this. Let's go. <laughs> Talk us through what we got here, man. Well, uh, we have here the complete piece of Ghost Rider. I'm going to do a, like a three, 360 uh, view so you can appreciate from all the angles. Uh, but well, as you can see, he has a lot of details. Uh, it was uh, a very hard work, but I enjoy every second of, of it. Wow. And what program is this? Is this um Seabrush? Seabrush. Man, I guess that's the go to thing. All right. I think everybody kind of uses that, right? Yes. I think it is the standard, the industry standard. Yeah. So uh, it's like the most common uh, program for sculptors. Dude, I love it. Look at that. We have that, like Daniel, Daniel. Oh, Bell wow. Portrait. <laughs> it's crazy because bef before I started buying statues, when I heard like sculpting, I thought everyone like did it by hand. Like you actually sculpt this by hand. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's, a, that's like a 21st lot of century. Now, no, I know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Digital digital computer, world. Yeah, like like being, in, world. being in the show with you in here, a lot of the stat, like, you know, a lot of the sculptors saying they use like the digital stuff. Like, oh, damn. I thought it was, like this was actually by hand. Like they actually, like, each one's individually done by hand. Is, is what it all started by, by hand. And may, if you do it in this program, it is also by hand because you have to do the strokes. You have to model all, all the things. Uh, oh, it's like with a brush strokes. and too. Right. Yeah, it's like oh, a like a brush. It's like a drawing in three dimensional uh, um, ambit, you know. But uh, I think it concerns a lot of the traditional stuff uh, and do it all by hand. Uh, you can touch all the volumes, but uh, with the strokes, you can feel like if you put some detail, it's going to place right when, where you put it. Um, I think that is a, a very good feedback with, with the sculpture. Okay. As you can see, the, the bike, it has a lot of details. It was put details of uh, molded um, metal. Uh, Look at the look at the look at the the motor there in the middle. That looks really go dope. Yeah. Yeah. And like you were saying, the um, I, I'm I'm not a motorcycle guy. I don't know what the part is, but uh, the those two, for lack of a better term, poles going into the wheel. What you were talking about, how it, you know you can see as it gets closer to the wheel, a lot more texture, a lot more burn, and then as it gets farther away, you see that fading away because it's farther yes. away from the fire. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Very cool. But it has a lot of detail. Uh, we put a lot of an effort in this piece. So um, I'm really happy with the final result. It looks amazing. It does. Yeah. Here we go. We got some more people in here saying some stuff. Uh, amazing. Thanks for sharing. Uh, wow. <laughs> Seeing the work that was put into this piece just makes me love it even more. See, that's what I was talking about in the beginning of the show. You know, once you figure out all the hard work and, you know, all the ins and outs of the stuff that you do, man, it makes you attracted more to the piece. Uh, really cool to see. Yep. AJ said the same thing. Reverse Zio in the chats. What's up, man? Uh, Franco is uh, answering uh, P-Rock. We just push buttons on the computer and a statue <laughs> no. comes out. Be real, or hey, don't lie. No. We have a, a, a button here. Well, no, yeah, I know. Yeah, I did, yeah. I'm just saying. Like, I thought like, the writer. statues are actually made, like you know, actually old school, like the with hand, like the clay, and then they had to like chivel it and everything like that. I thought it was still like that. Nah, yeah. not like that anymore. Mar marble, like uh, yeah, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> not that old, but yeah. How much? How much longer would this have taken you to carve out a marble, Jorge? Oh my god! I right? think like 
two minutes to 20 years. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. D-Rock, tell us about what using an abacus was like when you were a kid. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Man, oh, I, 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 Bernini and Bernini do stuff like this with, yeah. I don't know, 16 years old um, with Marvel. So oh. that was like insane. Uh, Poseidon and Persephone, that, that statue. Yes. Oh, yes, all the Amazing. statues. Yes. Yeah. Do, was, like mind blowing. Oh, yeah. It's really crazy. Dude, it looks great. Uh, Andrew, I didn't get your feedback. Uh, but when this came out, I know you were on the show talking about it. Um, what were your thoughts when you uh, when you seen this come out and then the light up feature when it came out? And now that you're looking at this. I mean, just seeing the work that goes into the. This is why I love doing this stuff with you guys is getting the, you know, behind the scenes type stuff with this. Cause as a, as a pretty newbie, if you will, to uh, the whole statue scene, um, I really like seeing the ins and outs of this industry and the art getting to meet the artists. And cause that's one of my favorite things, like as somebody that constantly goes to like conventions and stuff like that, <clears throat> as much as I like meeting some of the, you know, celebrities, voice actors, things like that, my wife and I really, connect with a lot of the artists uh whether it be for like the graphic design or the ones that we have typically don't have uh a lot of the statue based stuff on added unfortunately i wish they did uh but getting to connect with artists is really cool so this is a really cool way to do that as well but to get back to the piece uh at hand uh i was kind of like with you guys uh it was very cool when i saw it but when we got the light up feature it was just like awestruck um now I've never been like a huge, um, sorry, Ghost Rider. Just went blank. Ghost, Ghost, Ghost Rider. Yeah, I'm like looking at the skull, and my mind is just on fire, like his <laughs> uh, Ghost Rider fan. Um, I do remember watching the movies uh, back in the day, and looking at this every time I'm looking at, it, especially lit up. Now it makes me want to go back and watch them all over again just to uh, experience that because it just it mm. gives you that feeling. I know, I know that there's some things about the movies, but uh, the but I one. but I do <laughs> I do like some of the graphic stuff that they did with that um, the way that the way that he looked uh, at certain points and some of the things they did with that one. So this kind of reminded me of that, and I'm like, you know what? I, I have a little bit of that nostalgia to go back and and watch it again just because of this piece alone. Uh, whether I'm disappointed or not, it will remain to see. <laughs> <laughs> I liked him more when he was in the cartoons. When he popped up on like those Saturday night cartoons as like a guest. I think he was in Fantastic Four. Yeah. Or, or maybe it was the Hulk when they had to like fight uh, mm -hmm. uh Fantastic Galactus. Spider-Man. Yeah. Oh yeah. He shows yeah. up for Ooh, like literally he... a split second in the X-Men yes. anime series, like in a, a little yeah. cutaway type oh, of thing. Oh yeah, true. Um because I've been rewatching that. And I was like, "Whoa, wait, mm -hmm. that was Ghost Rider." <laughs> like, blink and you miss it type of moment. Yeah, man. Uh, listen, I like the character. Uh, listen, I think you guys did a great job, Jorge. Again, congratulations to you uh, doing this. Now, my last question before we move on to some of your other pieces. Uh, oh, but wait, before we move on, hold on, hold on. First off, I want to say what's up to Steve. Steve, what's up? Thank you for being on again. Uh, and of course, we got the man right here we just mentioned you not too long ago oh, daniel okay. bell hey, in the building hey, Danny. what's up danny Yo, big man. hugs and to my dear friends jorge and to the whole community as well of course daniel thank you for popping in on the show we are taking a look at his amazing Thanks, ghost rider uh no no pun intended but this is fire but uh <laughs> yeah my, my you know, question to you uh is i know obviously now we live in a world where you know we have a lot of social media you know, now we got shows like this that are on YouTube that, you know, kind of react to certain pieces and stuff. So do you watch yourself? Um, do you watch people, uh, you know, uh, talk about this when it comes out? Do you do you anticipate people's reaction? Like, what what do you do as as an artist? Do you sit there and 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 like see like get nervous when people react to it like what are, what are your thoughts when, yes. when that happens Speaking i know i asked that to everybody because i know if it was me like yeah. i'll be like glued to see like oh my god are they gonna like it you know what's the what's the whole consensus of it but what, what do you what, what do you do when you uh put out a piece like this uh and then the world gets to see it you no know, I, I try to listen to everyone opinion 
And I really listened to the community and all the stuff they had to say, all the things, all the good things they had to say. Uh, I try to to remember um, even the, the the bad things or the critics. Uh, I always <laughs> listen to them because uh, some of the things they say uh, it will really improve to to the the status. I think one of the things they maybe I don't know if you if you say okay this. This fire could be this way. Okay, we, we are listening. Uh, we, we don't say we are going to change it, but uh, all the all that the stuff that I read when a, a, a new study is published, uh, I I save it for myself and I have it in count for the next status and the next nice. pieces. But uh, right. I, I'm super nervous when, when I see a, a new review, um, uh, when someone published the statue in uh, some group in Facebook, I always check the the, the comments and stuff. So mm -hmm. I, I really try to listen to the, the community. Yeah, yeah, of course. Cool. Um, Listen, you got nothing but positive feedback on this show when it came out. So that was before we knew you were coming on. So uh, you're in good good hands with us here. But listen, uh, again, amazing job. I'm so glad it turned out the way it did. I'm so glad they added the LED feature. I'm so glad that you got to do this. Um, just very well done. Accomplished job. Now, my last question. Oh, Mario just popped in. El Professor, what's up, dude? Hey, what's going on, everybody? Happy Friday. Oh, you sound like shit, you, too. Uh, Mario. I've, been, Damn. I've been dealing with this thing all week, man, and I'm just barely getting over it. So just bear Ooh. with me, y'all. <laughs> nah, you're good, man. I think we're all like that. But uh, thank you for coming gusto. on. Hey, mucho gusto. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Mario, I know you just jumped in. Uh, yeah, yeah. Listen, when this came out and, you know, again, it got the LED feature and all that stuff, you know, I know everybody was kind of excited for this. What What are your thoughts on the piece? Uh, and I know I don't know how far into this show you've been in, but he just started showing some of the uh, behind the stage stuff. Uh, but what are your thoughts on it? No, nah, bro. When I first saw this piece, man, I really, I did really like this, the whole presentation of it, man. But when I saw on the live stream when Slideshow lit it up, after that, I was like, yo, that was that was just like it took it over the edge, man. You know, that yeah. was really that was really a surprise in the way. The way the whole thing is lit is just absolutely insane. And just the piece just comes to life, you know, with that with that light up feature, man. And I really, really, I really liked it a lot, man. A lot of a lot of the other collectors that I talk to who don't really collect that many statues are very interested in this piece after seeing that light up feature, man. So, but did an amazing job, man. It's really nice. Yeah, man, gave it that wow yeah. factor, right? Definitely, Pretty definitely. Cool. Man. Now, Jorge, are you gonna get one of these for your house or what? Are they gonna yes. send one in? <laughs> hey, you better. I have. A, better I have one. to to bring one of these big guys to my, to my house. Nice. To do a, a small collection. Yeah, right man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> next time, next time you're on, I want to see your entire collection set up behind you. Like, wow. <laughs> all the all the great stuff that you put on. Um, but listen, great, great job. Uh, let's uh, let's move on to some of your other statues real quick. So I'm gonna pull up. Uh, uh sean's uh page real quick one more time yep. and we're going to see some of the things here let's uh let's talk let's talk about spider-man noir um mm -hmm. let me know so spider-man Noir. we actually had the artist the guy who created spider-man noir on the show um yes. so we're familiar with the character obviously he's been super big in the uh new animated movie that came out uh obviously nicholas cage voiced him too i know nicholas cage has been maybe it's a sign we need to get nicholas cage on the show but uh, <laughs> we uh i would love to have him on the show that'd be a crazy show but anyway uh but yeah man this guy this character has been super popular lately i just got done playing spider-man 2 uh he's you know a character that you could pick or a skin or whatever you would want to call it uh definitely a cool character and this one is really nice too very popular too especially for those spider-man fans but talk to us about this character and what you did with this one. Oh man working with with danny in this uh, character was a dream come true danny as you know is one of the best sculptures in the world um, 
um, working with him in, in this piece and the Spider-Man classic piece was totally amazing. Um, I helped Danny uh, with some stuff of the base, um, create uh, the hands, the switch up hands and the grapple gun um, and create the, the primary and secondary form of the base. So Danny scope all the character, do the texture, do the details. Um, it was like a team effort. Um, I'm really proud and happy how it, it turned out. And, you know, I was, I was watching the, the final and the official pictures. I was mind blowing because mm -hmm. they captured the, the, the character so well. Um, I, I think I was watching like, uh, the Spider-Man, the my small artist Spider-Man movies. Mm -hmm the the day before i saw the official pictures so oh. uh, it was all fresh in my mind it was fresh yeah, yeah, it, was yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was amazing it was amazing and i think the the composition that danny creates in this piece uh the pose the the attitude the sequence of of the action in, in the in the image is amazing and we we create a lot of uh, small de details and easter eggs in all the pieces so I think all the fans can can watch some of that details and and spot it. Yeah, man, for sure. Uh, he came out really good, man. And again, there's a lot of Spider-Man uh, fans out there, Spider-Verse, trying to have that whole entire collection. Uh, any of you guys, uh, I don't know if anybody, did any of you guys pick this up or did you guys uh, like this piece at all? Any, any of you guys on, a, on the panel? I can't remember because this was a further back. You know how I mentioned... Um, I think it was before we jumped on how, you know, I try really hard not to get these large pieces. This is <laughs> one that I've been on the fence about since I saw it because it is just absolutely gorgeous. I, of course, like most people, like kind of uh, fell in love with this character because of the Spider-Verse movie. But then I did a deep dive, read the comics uh, for Spider-Man Noir and things like that and just really got this really cool feel for this character. So seeing this statue, I was just like, I, I couldn't believe it. Just the, the composition of the whole thing, the, the act, not just the action pose, but the actual, like the way that he's standing, the pieces that he's standing on the, the fractures that you see, just the entire sculpt is such a, such an art piece. You know what I mean? And um, that's, I, I've been back and forth on it so many times, it's not even funny. Uh, but it, I, I love it. I, I think it looks absolutely amazing. Yeah, well said, well said. It does look really good. Steve here, chiming in. Super impressive to create a dynamic piece like this with a limited color palette as well. I'm sure that's uh, art in itself, but... This is just a really good job, really good piece, man. And I love yeah. that they're, you know, they made like this, you know, character you don't see much of, especially in in figures or statues. So really good job there too, man. Really impressive. Yes, Danny. Danny is amazing. He's amazing. He is. So I'm super happy to work with him. One of the things that inspired me the most to create is to tell a story, or rather to to tell a sequence of movement in a static piece, as you know. So transmitting with the details, the action, the eyes, the expression, and at the same time, uh, working with uh, uh, artists that admire a lot, like Daniel or Martin Canale or Will Harbottle or Street Love. Uh, they w those are people that um, when I, st uh, I started to, to study the uh, 3D, uh, seeing their tags and works were a beacon of to follow. Um, during the years to come, his talks motivate me to achieve many of my goals. So it's a dream come true work with these guys. Dude, that's cool. Now, when you guys, <coughs> excuse me, when you guys collaborate, uh, are you guys are in the same room or is it like, how does that, how does that work? <laughs> I I live like 2000 miles away from Danny uh, and from <laughs> Martin. So there are, there are a lot of, uh, of messages. Um, we have like um, chats, uh, we have a, a video calls uh, to, to talk about the progress. Um, but uh, it's like we are we are all friends, so it's a very comfortable way of working. Um, and we have we 
didn't have any issue ever. So it's amazing. It's super comfortable to work with these guys. Um, I'm super happy, even if they are 2,000 miles away. <laughs> Dude, that's cool, though. That's impressive that, like, I mean, I kind of had an idea you probably wouldn't be in the same room together, but the communication <laughs> behind that to create something like this, to me, I, I don't know how it happens, but at the end result, getting something like this, the whole process behind it is really, really freaking amazing. So really good job there. I was wondering, yeah, Jorge, the um, considering it's uh, everyone's praising the composition, rightly so, because uh, especially with this kind of character, you don't have colors to separate out different parts of the arms, the body, the base. So it, mm -hmm. am I correct in that, you know, from the get go, a very clear, clean silhouette of the character exactly. was kind of what everything was built around? Yeah, because otherwise, think, you know, the black on top of black, everything would get lost. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. I think yeah. that Danny uh, having his mind like composition is all the most important in this piece. Yeah. So the silhouette has, uh, has to be right. Um, uh, he he put a lot of time and effort in 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 that sector, mm -hmm. and I think in you can see in the final piece all the the effort that this piece has. So I think the silhouette yeah, totally. was one of the most important steps in 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 this statue. Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah, it shows. Yeah, very. Yeah, cool. for sure. Dude, this is amazing too. Another great piece. Uh, now, speaking of collaboration, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this screen and I'm gonna show mine because this was another thing that broke the internet, uh, especially during the 12 days of Sideshow. Mm -hmm. um, and this was a collaborative piece. To be honest, between all three of my favorite uh, sculptors in Sideshow, of course, we got Danny, we got Jorge, and my thing, who I hope one day I get on my show, love that guy too. I talk to him all the time. But man, this is incredible, man. When this dropped as well, everybody was like, ooh and ah. Uh, I love dioramas. I wish they did more. Uh, I love having two characters or, 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 you know, telling a story. And there's so many things to pick apart and really look at just by one picture, right? Because we haven't seen much of this. Uh, mm -hmm you know, out yet. So the fact that people loved it so much just based off this picture, and I know we broke it down on our show a little bit as best as we could, but like the fire and the cape and then all the little Easter eggs here on the base and, you know, the uh, the, the sewer or the or that green, you know, slime that uh, Joker falls into. I was a big fan of, of Joker smacking, you know, Batman with a fish. I thought that was cool. <laughs> um but this is cool. But talk to me about this and collaborating with with two icons of you know sculpting. Oh man, I I think I created a post uh, a few weeks ago uh, that I was telling the, the the history about how when I started to to walk in this path of the three uh, D model and um, digital digital sculpture, uh, how two guys that I know just starting in this world uh, just uh, inspired me a lot to to continue working and continue studying. Uh, seeing Martin Canale works, uh, one of the, the, I think, first works with SciShow, um, seeing Danny's works uh, was, I think it was a game changer. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. since year later, uh, being able to work with these guys in this piece, uh, I think was uh, the the closure of a, a circle. Uh, um, uh, I still can't believe it <laughs> to this day. Uh, Claudito Abram also worked in this piece. So, we are four Argentinian guys uh, for sculptors working wow. in, this, uh, in this piece. Uh -huh. wow. Yeah. Dude, it, this it is amazing. awesome. Mm -hmm. What uh, when you heard the feedback on this, you know, how did you feel about it? Oh man, we we were super happy because all the feedback were super positive, and all the people were were like, "Oh man, this is insane! This is a premium mm -hmm. format, one for uh, 
and you know we have a, a Batman of Danny, we have a Joker of of, of Martin Canale um, in one piece. So I think that is a, a game changer itself. <laughs> so being able to work in in the base of of these characters, um, we, we cannot see anything of this other base yet, but it was amazing. It was a, a an awesome job. Um, a, a very hard to <laughs> dude listen um when this came out again 12 days of sideshow we we kind of went nuts we talked about this one this was a good one too and like you said to have so many great artists involved in one thing um this is gonna be huge um i can't wait to see more i'm hoping sideshow does it sooner than later because i think we're all anticipating more shots from this but I know we said it behind stage, but um, I feel like this time sideshow right now is just giving us banger after. I felt like they tricked us, right? Like I felt like yeah. they waited all this time. It was just like, we're just going to banger after banger after banger. Because I think there hasn't been a time where I've wanted to buy a piece from sideshow one after another, after another, after another. Like usually I'll buy a piece from sideshow and then, you know, turn to other companies doing other things. But Sideshow has been doing such a great job with not only the, the the final production of pieces, but the characters they're coming out with. You know what I mean? It's just like you got these characters you don't see a lot of, and then the characters that you see a lot of, you get something like this, right? Something that's never done before as far as these artists collaborating with each other. Um, you got the two. Obviously, you can't have Batman without Joker. Love that. Um, but really amazing piece here, too. And like I said, I hope we get more from them really soon because I think this one really, uh, you guys nailed it and hit this one out the park. Uh, Mario, we talked about this on the show when you were on too. Uh, what yeah. are your thoughts behind this one? No, again, it's an amazing piece. I love the the, the story that's actually telling. But now, you know, now that Jorge is actually here, I'm curious to know how does a collaborative process work between three artists on one piece, man? How how does like the design work go into this? Mm -hmm. uh, Martin and Danny directed piece, but uh, uh, we are all friends, so it's yeah. super comfortable work with these guys. So I don't know if I, I have an idea for the base or for the character itself. I say, hey guys, what what do you think about this? Um, it was oh th that's amazing. Oh, we can change it a <laughs> bit, and it was super comfortable, super easy to work with. That's um, great, man. Yes, yes. It was amazing. I, I would, I it was like this. three three friends talking yeah. and working together. So it was super easy. And I will definitely do it again. <laughs> you know, I would imagine that you would have three artists that are sitting there trying to figure out, you know, how we're gonna make this work. I would imagine there may have been like some, you know, a couple clashes here and there, but that's great to hear that you guys get along so well that the the work just flows and you guys are able to create something as beautiful as this, man. It's a real fantastic piece. Yes, it helped a lot that the three, the, the Martin, Danny, and me, and Claudio, we are all super uh, aware of the detail. Um, for example, when uh, Martin has to give me some feedback and how to change some stuff, uh, Martin is amazing. He has yeah. one of the most impressive minds to create characters that I have mm. I have ever witnessed. You know, it's it's amazing. So he's super aware of all the details and he he directed the piece super well. He he I learned a lot during this process of how con to construct a, a, a good piece, a good base mm. uh, with a good composition. So it was amazing, and Martin as Daniel, they were su they are super nice guys. So all the feedback I received from them, um, I took it from the best way because uh, those guys explaining so well, so kind, uh, it's amazing. So <laughs> it's really amazing. Uh, here That's we go. Awesome, here's a here's a. It's very inspiring to see fellow Argentinians all working together on these incredible pieces of art. Much love, Jorge. True, no. true, true. <laughs> it's exciting to think water. about what other collaborations could come. You know, from the not. I mean, not just the three of you, but also mm -hmm. you collaborating with other artists as well. You know, in the future. Oh man, I, I collaborate with well with Danny 
we collaborate in <laughs> I think two pieces, um, three with with this one with Martin too. I collaborate with uh, Matt Black in the Joda Mito statue. I collaborate with um, uh, I think Will Halbrotel. Uh, it's so yeah. I learned a lot with those guys. It's it's amazing. It's That's amazing. Awesome. It's, Dude, I think that's really is cool. like a family. Um, we are constantly learning from each other. I'm I'm happy that Sideshow's kind of giving you guys the liberty to do stuff like that because I feel like now yeah. you guys they're giving you more creative rights or cre the, the creative process is more like based around your ideas and and like you guys are able to put more input into it. Obviously, there's licensing issues and stuff like that that you know, uh, that plays the hand too. But like, I feel like they're giving you guys like a, a empty canvas and say, knock it out the park. And you guys have been doing that. And you can see that because I just looked up. I've been guys, for those who don't know, I put some of the links in the chats for when, if you guys want to order these, I put the link in the chat to follow her here on Instagram as well. But I, I was just looking at sideshow. Almost every single piece is waitlisted. So that means these have been <laughs> selling like crazy. The Spider-Man more uh, exclusive, the premium format Spider-Man, the Yoda, which we're going to pull up now, uh, and Ghost Rider's up for pre-order as well. But most of these pieces are all waitlisted because they have been selling like crazy, which is awesome. And it just shows right there how great of, you know, a product that you guys are coming out with. Um, let's take a look at Yoda because we have we do have some Star Wars fans inside of this uh, panel here. Uh, this is a really cool one too, a little older piece. But um, you know, who was it that I forgot who it was? But um, the main sculptor? No, no. Who was the main sculptor for this? The main sculptor was Matt Black. Uh, he designed and sculpted all the primary and secondary forms of all the pieces. Gotcha. Uh, so working with Matt Black uh, was a dream come true too, because he's amazing. He knows so much about the Star Wars. I'm a very big Star Wars fan. So <laughs> it was like, I was like a, in a, a child in a, <laughs> in a playground <laughs> working with Matt. Um, the Kucharek brothers uh, also participated. Dude, they're in fantastic. The I love them. Richard Lone also participated in the design. And she Isuma is the the paint, and uh, of course all the this sideshow design and development team. But it was a a very big team effort too. Dude, it, I mean it shows. This is incredible too. Another piece that kind of came out of the blue when it came out, and people loved it. Um, P Rock's a big Star Wars fan too. Uh, P Rock, what are your thoughts on this one? No, this is a nice piece, but. It, it looks nice. I love the the action for Yoda. Like he's in that like that dynamic pose, about to swing the lightsaber. Um, I didn't pick it at a time because I I can't dive into the Star Wars stuff for statues. I do Hot Toys figures, and so I was like, I'm I'm, I'm yeah. Don't but yourself, but bro. but not only that, like I wasn't I, I I was never really a big fan. Like I know Mario's more of the fan of the mythos stuff. This is more like a mythos type look, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah see, I'm not a, like the mythos. I don't really like go too deep into the mythos i know mario does but i don't I, I feel like you would go down a rabbit hole though you're right about that but yeah, mario yeah. mario i know he's got his darth vader uh yeah. what did you think about this piece no this was this was absolutely a surprise man i mean considering the mythos line it was i was surprised to see obi-wan and anakin but then to see yoda mm -hmm. i was like okay i was kind of drawing it back a bit but then after taking a look at it and just taking a look at all the extra details i really liked it a lot man the, the the take on the um on that the way that they have his hairstyle and kind of like that old uh you know that old Japanese style kind of way with oh, the tail ponytail in the back that's that's an interesting touch man this base is phenomenal yeah I gotta say mm -hmm. there is so much going on in this base it's absolutely cool man and yeah I think this this entire this this revised line of the mythos I mean me being a Star Wars fan that I am I'm actually a more of a Sith guy you know if I gotta say <laughs> so I'm gonna <laughs> you know. That's where my heart is at. You know, I've got I've got Maul, I've got Asajj, I've got Vader. But I'm also looking forward to this Kenobi that they teased. That's another one that I wouldn't Oof. think that they would bring back out. But from, from what I understand, that's part of the uh, premium format line, but they're calling it a Mythos Kenobi. So that's going to be interesting to see how that one's actually going to come out. But still, hmm. incredible piece with this Yoda, man. Like like Miguel said, this was a complete surprise to actually see yeah. this, man. And, uh, welcome yeah, it caught everybody off guard for yeah. sure. Yeah. But really, really cool piece here. 
Uh, Andrew, what did you think about this one? Uh, I think the thing that really uh, stood out for me was just having Yoda have such like a well done action piece. Like that's not something we get from Yoda that you see very often, whether it's statues, uh, figures or otherwise, because for the most part, you know, he's, he's the teacher. He's the, you know, mm-hmm. he's been around, he, he's a little too old maybe to, to do certain no. things, but this is what, well, let me, I just mean, <laughs> they always want to do the, the like original trilogy version as opposed to this is giving me more of like the prequel era uh, yes. Yoda mm-hmm. where exactly. he can still do the yeah. flips and the spins and all that kind of stuff. He's not, you know, stuck on Dagobah teaching type of thing. And don't get exactly. me wrong, he's he's still very powerful, but he he's up there in age at that point. So it's it's really cool to see something like this. I do love that um, that blade right there, where it's got like the motion uh, blur mm-hmm. uh, effect. Uh, effect. Yeah. It's such a cool thing. I love when uh, statues and figures do stuff like that. Like and but it has to be done well, and this one is done really really well. Mm-hmm. I love I love that it's not just a solid um like blade because sometimes they'll do it when it just looks like a giant triangle you know attached to the uh, <laughs> attached to the lightsaber so that effect is way better than some of the ones i've seen uh, but like i said get, just getting to see a character like yoda get to shine a little bit uh outside of is like if you want to say like comfort zone a type space that some people use is something very uh cool to see yeah for sure yes. well well, said, well as you as you say uh, this was based in a High Republic era. It was oh, I think, very nice. Years that makes more sense. Before the yeah. prequels, yes, yes, yes. I think one of the things I love the most was the hair, like the samurai hair. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And if, I think it was a very nice touch because uh, Matt Black and I uh, were super fan of uh, Kurosawa movies, uh, yeah. so nice. we base a lot of that mythology in in this piece. And also, George Lucas was a very big fan and based yep. a lot of the Star Wars stuff uh, in, in Kurosawa. Uh, so it was a very oh, nice yeah. touch, very nice Easter egg. Hell yeah, that's awesome. We got AJ here saying uh, that Yoda is absolutely fantastic too. One of the most dynamic pieces I have in my collection. I just opened it uh, last week oh. and I loved it. Masterpiece. Oh, wow. Congratulations. <laughs> Very cool. Um, somebody else said, "Oh, Ren's in the building, saying the same thing." Yoda statue is amazing. See, I feel too. if I did, if I did dive into the mythos, I would have them all with their alternate lightsabers. Like that'd be a touch for the mythos. I know Vader has that one that's on fire. Like some people didn't like that, but I like it's just a different touch. So if I did collect this, I would have them all with the swappable lightsaber. The alternate portrait was the one that got my attention with this thing. Like you mentioned, was the uh, the Kurosawa inspired samurai hair on this thing it's really it's, it's something different like yeah like that for sure I, it's really nice i think the one that still stands out for me on this mythos line is that asajj ventress that thing it just <laughs> I, every time yeah. i see it i'm like yep. damn that's a good piece but yeah. this is honestly this is up there I, i'm not gonna <laughs> lie like it, even for me personally i i have something about this one stands out to me more than even like the anakin and obi-wan one from before i don't know why but it just does I think it fulfills that sort of you, you know, I think it was uh, episode two when he fought Count Dooku. Yeah. That 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 fight scene where it's like, oh my god, this is his true power. <laughs> this is yeah. like what's been bottled in that character all this time. And this statue captures like, all right, what what would it be like when we could see Yoda at his physical prime? Yes. You yeah, know? For and, sure. and, yeah. Badass. Real yeah. badass Yoda. I love it. Badass, badass. Uh, we got. I'm a uh, super Star Wars fan, so when I have the opportunity, or um, when I just saw the 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 notice that I was going to work in this piece with Matt Black, it was one of the happiest day of my life. Oh wow! <laughs> that's yeah, great. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I think for circle, for circle, because uh, I think all my life led me to to walk this path. In fact, in my childhood, not only there wasn't not much technology since I was born in a, a small town far from big cities, but I also came from a humble family, you could say. We, we were not poor, but we were not rich either, you know? And many times there was no money to buy new toys and stuff. But for me, that was no problem because my parents always made an effort to ensure that I, I never lacked anything. 
um, there is a, a history that shaped me a lot when I was seven years old uh, and we couldn't buy Legos or plastic. My mother created a kind of, of mass mm -hmm. uh, called Masa de Sal. Uh, it was made with salt, flour, and water, and the result was kind of homemade clay. Um, oh, without wow. realizing, uh, I started to create my first sculptures, um, giving free reign to my imagination. And also, I play with the toys mm -hmm. that my older brothers had left me. I think that playing with with that mass and wood stick, uh, where I nourish that part of my being the most since I imagine entire wars, entire sequence, entire fights. So when I play with this, it uh, was a game changer too. Uh, so I'm super grateful for the support my mother and my father give me and all my family. And I overall, I believe that every artist has that inner child that leads him to continue creating stories with with his art and continue exploring the, the imagination. And I feel that it's more tangible when in the childhood you were given free reign to this aspect. Uh, all of this combined that I grew up uh, in a town far from any city. So sometimes I like resource or opportunities since I was lit, it made me work and made me effort twice as hard to obtain things. Um, this today is one of the pillars that made me continue wanting to improve day by day in each figure, evolving and learning, learning as much as possible. Dude, that is like the best story ever. I love stories like that. Um, I'm on did you some ever, issues, guys. I know, right? I'm about to go PO this right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I'm about to go in my wallet. God, uh, dude, I love that. Like, I love that. This is this is the that right there was a sole reason why I love having artists on the show. So, did you ever think, right? Did you ever think growing up? You knew you, you know, you started getting into sculpting. Did you ever think that you were actually gonna like do a finalized licensed piece? for a big company and it was something from Star Wars. Did you ever imagine that? Did you kind of know it was going to happen eventually? Or, or did, was uh, this something that's kind of was just like, oh my God. Yes, I trust I trust in myself that mm. it's going to happen eventually. But uh, it's still to this day, it's a dream come true, you know. Uh, it's surrealist. Sometimes I, I see the works and I think, dude, <laughs> I I made this, <laughs> so yeah. that is something something amazing. Uh, when I was a kid, I liked to draw a lot, so I drew too many years until eventually, due to time constraints, I gave it up. But uh, later, when I finished high school, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Uh, but uh, I really love the animations, uh, um, video game cinematics, um, all the the Marvel movies of that era, and Star Wars. So I wanted to study something that led me to that path. Uh, so I decided to study to study three university careers at the same time. So wow. my first year was, I was doing three university careers. Um, I studied 3D modeling, and digital sculpture, a program, and design. And in the end, I decided to dedicate myself only to the 3D modeling and digital, digital sculpture. And, and in my first years, um, I started doing engineering work, architecture. Uh, with mm. Siebert, I started to making jewelry pieces like rings and all the stuff. Um, uh, while I study anatomy. All this while, while I study anatomy. Oh, wow. uh, I continue perfecting my, my art step by step. Eventually, I started taking commissions on page like fibers to make some small collectibles. And finally, I started to create some dioramas and printing, printing on my own because this is the, the path I wanted to follow. Um, I have my goals like reaching in the world. So hmm. I, visual, I visualize it. All, all, all my goals and work uh, to be one step closer at the time. <laughs> Dude, that's freaking awesome. Oh, I love it. I got goosebumps. I got goosebumps. I love it. <laughs> uh, we got uh, so real quick. I got, I'm going I'm to say this. This guy's name is Geronimo. I love it. Geronimo. Right? He's saying, <laughs> he's laughing. Uh, that's so funny. And then we got a question here. Good one. 
artists that have inspired you growing up? I know we got to, you know, my thing and Daniel, but was there anybody else who really inspired you growing up? Oh man, there are, there are a lot of, of, of artists. <laughs> um, I think, I mean, I saw a station all the days, Instagram all the days, and there are a lot of artists uh, posting their work. Uh, but I think I will say Gio Napkill. Uh, he works the, the forms and the shapes in a very unique way. Uh, Daniel, Martin, uh, Will Halbortel, Steve Lord, they are all my, my reference. Um, one of the guys uh, I'm a very big fan is Bernini. So every time I, I, I saw a Bernini piece, um, I'm just like, watching for a few minutes because that guy was nuts <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. awesome dude that's awesome man mm -hmm. i love it great stories there now <clears throat> i want to stick to star wars right so <clears throat> now this is a little different the next one we're going to talk about is a designer figure that you did with sideshow it's fairly new it's up for mm -hmm. pre-order right now uh, um uh, it's an Ewok and this got a lot of attention as well. And the cool thing about it is that they had, uh, I don't know, somebody, was it you? I think you just posted, but somebody just posted the video of the print for this, but talk to me about this. Cause this is a lot different than just a normal statue. It's considered like a designer statue. Mm -hmm. Um, but talk to us about the, uh, this Ewok. It's super adorable. Oh man. When I, when I received the, the, the news, I, I was working in this piece and I saw the concept, I immediately fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> it was amazing. It was super cute. And it was like one of, I think, the first collaboration uh, between Mark Graves and the SciShift team. So it was very important. Uh, Mark Graves is an amazing artist. Uh, I don't know if you are, uh, if you know her work, but mm -hmm. uh, it has a very cute work. And one of the things that is more important it was the the eyes and the expression of the eyes and the life in the eyes so i was trying to to focus of all my attention um without uh, I, I don't know jeopardize any other uh, sound of the piece but i think uh, uh, we want to capture a very cute nice moment and fill it with uh, life in the eyes of of these literal creatures <laughs> Dude, I think you guys did a great job with this one too. And this one, the price point's awesome. It's only $120, guys. It's not that expensive. It's a really cool uh, little designer figure to have uh, in your collection. Again, they just came out with the print to match this from that artist that he spoke about, which was pretty cool. And you also have some behind the scenes stuff with this one too, right? Exactly. Oh, exactly. let's do those. The let's share the screen right now. Yeah, let me, uh, give me one second. Actually, I think you unshared it, so share it one yes. more time. Yes, <laughs> I'm going to share. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. But this is pretty cool. Um, this is different, so I'm glad that we're bringing this up. Wow, there you go. Look at that. It looks it looks a lot uglier without cut. <laughs> it looks like it looks a little. There you go. It looks good though. So is there is this a specific Ewok? Like, is there a name for this one? No, it, it designed it Mark Graves with mm -hmm. his own unique and a perspective of the character so it's a, a character created uh, like from scratch nice this is cool this is different too uh mario star wars fan what are your thoughts on this i know it's a designer figure but um yeah, yeah, yeah. what do you well, think like you said, it is it is absolutely different we don't see anything as far as ewoks is concerned much at all in um in any in any statue format but I just want to sit here and watch Jorge work. <laughs> just just shot the model. The eyes, though, man, the eyes came out. I gotta say, the eyes came out fantastic, man. The expression in the eyes in both the mother and the baby. Yes. You know, they look, they're, they're very lifelike and expressive. You can see, like, the baby looks afraid, you know, while, <laughs> you know, it's, or, 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 or something. It looks, it looks really cool, man. I like the way that actually came out. Yeah, and this is my so unruly cool. industry. So they do so, a lot of designer stuff, but. Mm -hmm. This is cool, man. I, I like it. It's different. <clears throat> Can you define designer? What do you mean by designer? 
uh, designer designer figures or statues or toys are more like you usually see a lot more of those than like vinyl figures too. But it's like um, it's just like the the niche uh, for okay. it. So like I'm trying to let me see how you ever a, seen a lot those. Of times, mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. A lot of times it's also a, a big standpoint of them is that they're in collaboration with an we can know an mm -hmm. already big artist like you said mab graves who's uh so kind of like Mondo with the soft vinyl godzilla stuff and they have like other artists do their version similar, like similar, yes yeah All right. yeah, yeah yep. definitely i got you that's really cool um thank you sean because that that uh <clears throat> yeah, no were good examples too um but this is neat how this do you Jorge, how do you get the? Because yes. as you turn the figure around, you can see mm -hmm. the highlight in their pupil. You can see that light turning with it. How do you get like mm -hmm. that glassy look? Oh yeah, look yeah. at that Z brush. Yes. You see how that highlight moves around with them? Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's, Ooh, it's, it's following just me. The, the, the <laughs> material is like I think right, and that, oh, you can select from that right. Okay, uh -huh. the plastic and create this nice effect for for the eyes. Cool. Yes. It, yeah, it really is a are. very cute piece. Uh, mm -hmm. Remember, guys, this these guys defeat the empire. <laughs> so <laughs> were, this is the last thing I saw Trooper show in, in the Ender Moon. So yeah, yeah. Few, you <laughs> seen a few of them in the background. Han and Chewie and Luke, man. Exactly. When they were wow. when they were celebrating, you seen a few parents like holding the babies in the background when they were celebrating. Exactly. Like, hey, yes. Hey, hey. There were a few of them. These guys there. were were the last thing. In, uh, some uh, some troopers so <laughs> and out, out in nature by a, by, a, by a tree <laughs> out in mm. nature a mother defending her uh, children <laughs> is some of the most dangerous stuff you can come across so exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. i don't know if you play battlefront 2 it yeah. has a, a little bit yeah. a, a mode of ewok ewok hunt it calls it, was, ewok. it, it is no, one that. of the most uh, ter ter you know, terrifying. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't play horror games, but it was Han. It was <laughs> one of the most <laughs> scariest game I have ever played. You know, uh, it is all in dark. It's it's in the night, and you you can hear the horns in the distance mm. <laughs> and see all <laughs> the little stuff running around. It's super scary. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Ewoks are literally hunting you, and it's yes. uh, it's it's basically the, a Star Wars horror game. <laughs> yes, exactly. Really? Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, so, Andrew, I know uh, your wife likes uh, designer stuff, and I've been to your house too. Like, you got a lot of cool stuff that's uh, different. What did, What did you think about this one? This one was very unique when when I saw it originally pop up. It was definitely something outside of the norm, and I wasn't. Uh, uh, I was kind of shocked when I saw Sideshow post about it. Um, the I'm kind of like everybody else. The eyes is really what drew me in. Um, just how like lifelike and how much depth they they showed in the expression and just with the, the facial features and just the overall piece in general. Um, I mean, my wife, my wife's a big Ewok fan just uh, in general. <laughs> so she she definitely thought it was cute. Yeah, like I said, the price point's really good too. It's only one hundred and twenty dollars. Um, how how tall is this again? This is uh, I know. don't remember correctly. I think in the you can 12? see the exactly measures in the official page. Oh, it's seven uh, inches uh, tall. <clears throat> exactly seven inches tall. Um, it looks good though. I like it. I would put it like next to my plants or something <laughs> inside, <laughs> like in the kitchen or something. My my kitchen Star Wars, so this would look perfect in there. Um, <laughs> dude, I like it. It's pretty cool, uh, and it has a removable uh, base as well, so he stands up on his own. I like it. Exactly. The colors look amazing too, man. It looks really good. Man, so much, okay. man. So much stuff, man. Dude, I am looking also forward to. Uh, Obviously, Weapon X, man. I know there's a lot of things that they tease, man, but I cannot wait for that one to come out. Uh, it might be a day one PO, so we'll see. But, dude, thank you so much. Uh, we're kind of heading towards the end of our show here. Uh, some of these guys got to head to their own show as well. But, Jorge, dude, amazing work, man. And thank you for taking the time out to be on our show. Obviously, a good friend of the show, man. You know, 
Uh, you've been doing some killer things with your work and sideshow. So I want to congratulate you. Um, and can you just let us know everybody where they could find you? I put your links uh, in the bio of the video and both in the chats, but why don't you go ahead and plug in your stuff, man? Oh man. Yes, of course. You can, you can find me in Instagram and our station. I think you, you post both, uh, both uh, links. So that is uh, the place I, I be the most. So I thank you so much guys uh, for the invitation. It, it was really a pleasure. I, it was amazing and mm. i want to 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 thanks sideshow because uh working for uh, for sideshow is like a dream come true it took many years of effort to to achieve this goal many hours of work and dedication but it's worth every second when i think in in my past and uh, what it's like to belong to sideshow as you know it is not only the biggest company of collectibles in the world but they treat the, the artists and the employees in a fantastic way. They take uh, great care of us. Um, I feel that it is a family. I feel that having the privilege of being able to work alongside giants such as Daniel, Martin Canale, Will Hat Bortel, Steve Lord, create a unique and enrichment experience. And I really feel honored and happy to be able to help SciShow and have the chance to work on so many projects so far dude yeah and yeah. thank you for sideshow for allowing this to happen and you know uh believing in you know my crew here i know some of them kind of we had little issues here uh you know there's storms happening uh anthony had to, to leave because he started throwing up and stuff so he wasn't feeling good he said that in the beginning of the show uh but um dude again thank you so much man i really enjoyed this time i really love doing this with artists and stuff because we get to see and hear these stories, right? Um, about how this got started, how you guys got started. You know, the behind the scenes stuff is always fun. I don't think we've really done that much on our show where we get to see somebody's, you know, uh, work and effort behind everything that they do. So really, really cool, man. I really appreciate you being on. I just put his artist station in the chats as well, just in case. Um, thank you everybody for, you know, obviously being in the chats and, and being engaged too, which is pretty cool. But, um, dude, thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to, uh, you know, mention before I get to these guys and anything like that? Um, I don't know. Maybe follow your dreams and fight for <laughs> your love. <laughs> and, you yeah. know, you're going to encounter a million of difficulties and negative comments. But do not get discouraged and trust your guts. Um, if this is something that you really love, fight with passion. It is a path that will involve sacrifice Um you will even suffer, but it will teach him patience, determination, self-discipline. And no matter how hard the path is, the reward will be just as rewarding. <laughs> Hell yeah. Love that. Love that. Love that. Love that so much, man. Thank you so much for that. Um, guys, that concludes our show, man. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, another, you know, great sculptor on, you know, giving us some insider stuff, guys. I really love that. Bro, hope to have you back on the show in the near future, man. Maybe when that Weapon X comes out. Or maybe, you know what I would love to do? First, I got to get my thing on. First, definitely got to get my thing on. I've been telling him um, he's definitely got to come on the show. But once that's done, I would love to have all you guys together all in one, you know, live cool. to talk about. To see <laughs> that, that that you know, that chemistry, right? Because <laughs> I know it's there. You know, uh, Danny said the same thing that you said. Um, but I would love to have you all on and that would be really cool. Maybe get Terry back on the show and stuff. Uh, oh, AJ, thank you so much. Uh, super chat. Thanks for another fantastic show. I really appreciate that. AJ, uh, really cool. Well, Ren's another talented artist, you know, just follow Jorge on IG need more inspirations in my life. He's a fantastic artist as well. He's amazing. Um, yeah. he's Thanks. really good. Thanks. Um, but man, thank you, AJ. Thank you a lot, man. You didn't, you didn't have to do that, brother. Uh, but yeah, man, really appreciate you being on guys. That concludes our show. Let's see what we have going in the near future for you guys. Um, let's start with, uh, Andrew, Andrew, you got anything going on? I know you just dropped a review for, uh, uh, X-Men 97, which I gotta, I gotta watch because I'm a huge fan of that too. So, uh, but how's that working out? Yeah, we, uh, we just dropped a new episode of retroactive on the channel. Uh, check us out at retroactive POD here on YouTube. Uh, TikTok, that sort of thing. We're talking a lot of Marvel because so much Marvel stuff's been coming out. 
talking about the <laughs> X-Men 97 trailer, Deadpool, Wolverine, um, rumors about like Henry Cavill casting, all that kind of stuff. So fun stuff. Mm-hmm. Maybe not some, some not so fun stuff like Madam Web, but you know. Uh, it is I was waiting for, <laughs> <laughs> wait for that one. I was waiting for that uh, but, Did that uh, not do well? I haven't heard anything. Yeah, I, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, but also <laughs> check me out on my socials at Andrew is losing on uh, pretty much all social media. Uh, you can check out all the collecting type stuff that I do. Uh, even though I don't have a ton of statues, I do uh, quite a bit of other collecting. So be sure to check me out on those channels, dude. Uh, yeah, we don't talk about Madam Web. There's a lot. There's there's things we don't talk about. That's gonna be one of them. And I haven't even. I, I'm still gonna watch it though. Whatever. But uh, new, dude, thank you so much. Club. We don't talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. But uh, yeah, thanks so much. It man. is like a fight club. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh sean dude thank you so much for being on what you got going on man any, did you finish any more of your art are you starting anybody else like what's 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 the update on your amazing artwork thank you thank you uh yeah waiting on um uh, so basically when a work of art gets done for the prints you have to proof them they send you one piece to make sure all the colors look great and then you go ahead with the final run yeah but a little bit behind on that with some of the latest pieces of art proofs have been uh a, a little slow but the, they'll be out there soon um yeah and in uh two weeks uh gonna be at awesome con in uh dc first time being at that show so uh, oh, wow. nice. dc area yeah come by check me out i'll be an artist alley hell yeah man and where can they find you and oh uh, yeah uh instagram sean carlson art sean spelled s-e-a and the irish and uh now as i've become part of the Spanish brethren, thanks to Miguel. Dude, that Master Chief piece you posted is amazing. Yeah. By the way. Oh, thank you. I pre- thank you, man. I appreciate oh, that. Man, I'm definitely going to be amazing. snagging that when you when you get that on the on your show. Oh, my God. It's so oh, I funny. appreciate that. Well, listen, you send me a DM. We'll, uh, we'll deal directly, right? Sounds good. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's so funny, bro. Oh, that was the greatest thing ever. Uh, <laughs> P Rock, uh, you're going to be hosting LWO tonight. Super excited about yes, that. Yes. Starts at 10:45, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yep. No, you are correct. You are correct. All right. All right. So, what you got going on? Uh, I know you just came out with a recent <laughs> review of the Godzilla bus, right? Am I, am yep, I up to yep. date? Yep. Yep. Uh, like okay. Toys Godzilla bus. Got that review. Um, unfortunately, I got a little injury, so I'm behind on any kind of articulating reviews. I can't use both hands, so. I got a few figures I got to finish. I got to do the band bat. I got the man bat came in. My beast man. Oh, from in. Mondo. Yeah. Oh, oh. that's what, that has something to do with the injury. <laughs> really? But anyway, oh. yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. But um, yeah. So I was, I still got to review that, and I I still got to do the man, uh, beast man's coming in too. I got to review that. Oh. And a few other things coming in once my hands gets better. So for now, I can only do reviews for like statues and stuff. Stuff I could I could handle one hand. So. Just that, just that, and uh, LWO and uh, Profi Chat Mondays, and then here on Fridays with you guys. Let's go, man! I hope you didn't get a real bat inside that box. I was gonna say it's clearly no. a, ba- a bite <laughs> yeah. from the man. Bat. <laughs> right. uh, I'm excited though, man! Thank you, but guys, after this, obviously head over to LWO to continue the fun. Mario, thank you for being on. I know you're not feeling that great, um, but man, what you got going on? No, oh, thanks for having me on, man. Uh, Jorge, it was a pleasure to meet you today, man. Um, <laughs> My pleasure. Yeah, it was great to uh, talk to everybody tonight again as well. Um, as P Rock just mentioned, I'll be over there with him on LWO. Who knows what kind of shenanigans we'll get in tonight? <laughs> it's Friday night. P Rock's hosting. Who, who knows what's going to happen? Man. Chaos. It's, all I know is going to be fun, man. <laughs> He's and, like, um, chaos. Yeah, Monday night profi chat, 9 30 Eastern time, man. It's always a good time just hanging out. You know, you, P Rock, you know, Calvin, the fellas. And um, yeah, basically it, man. But um, once again, happy Friday. Good to see everybody tonight. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. Uh, as far as Toy Quest 101, guys, goes, um, I will not be having a live show for the next two weeks because I will be heading to Brazil to work. Super excited about that. If I don't come back, nice. guys, you can take over the show. Andrew, <laughs> you are the official uh, Toy Quest 101 guy from now on. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be uh, visiting Iron Studios as well when I'm out there. So I'll still be doing some stuff Ooh. for the channel. And then we're going to come back with two more bangers, hopefully, uh, just scheduling some shows there. Um, but my biggest news, guys, and this I've been super excited for, is that I have officially collaborated with and partnered up with Sylvester Stallone and 
the Sly Stallone shop. You guys have heard me before say that I'm a huge Amazing. fan of Sylvester Stallone. Woo! Philadelphia, nice. thank you, thank you. I'm so happy. Uh, Philadelphia is right behind my backyard, <laughs> so I'm like super ecstatic. And my first review, which is going to be coming out in a couple days, is this lovely figure right here. Check this out, guys. Boom. <laughs> Got that cobra, you know. Got man. that cobra, man. Right, and right. I can't wait for you guys to see the review because uh I went in on this. It's a long review, it's like half hour almost, uh, probably a little bit more, but a lot of good things to say about that. But guys, um obviously we're here every Friday night. I try to you know come out with a review every week, and Dennis is coming out with the penguin soon for our channel as well for Toy Quest 101 Unbox. And uh yeah, we'll be on Profi Chat on Mondays, but again, I'm not gonna be here for the next two weeks, so I'll see you guys back around. But listen, guys, I appreciate everybody being on. Jorge, thank you so much. Stick around after this. Don't leave. Um, and guys, <laughs> again, I got to tell people that for now on because yeah, uh, right? sometimes people don't know. Oh. <laughs> um, thank you, guys. You were uh, thank a you. one panel. Thank you. It's amazing. You <laughs> made me feel super comfortable. I'm super happy to share uh, some words with you guys so thank you oh, so much thanks oh dude thank day. you man the pleasure's ours honors ours and i uh, hope to work, see you back work. man what'd you yeah. say it's amazing work amazing work oh yeah of course for sure for sure but That's thank you guys saying. and we'll uh see you guys on another episode of collectors assemble live in three weeks guys <laughs> see y'all <laughs>